welcome back for another video. In this video, we'll look at how the team's set to line up this week, the tryouts are plans, and all the talking points ahead of Gimmick 37. If you missed the Double Gimmick 37 players to buy video, that'll be on screen at the end to watch as well. At the time of recording, Newcastle vs Brighton, the final match to play in Gimmick 36, here's how the team got on. 60 points as it stands, a green or red arrow all weighing on the final match. We talked in last week's video about how the single game because Salah and Haaland could be the best bet and they did both deliver and Salah in particular with 3 assists against Leicester, no bonus amazingly, including that layoff for Liverpool's third which was the Trent free kick. Trippier captain got off to a terrible start however, it was between him and Isaac with no route to Wilson possible having known Botman already. Only 4 points between the two, which actually isn't significant, and still a chance to turn it around. Newcastle were second, only to Man City on the clean sheet odds, and without hindsight, Isaac and Trippier were on par for projected points, and Trippier of course now for starts, so it was absolutely fine to go for him captain in my eyes. Let's see how the second game goes. Well done to any of you who picked up Wilson for his haul by the way. A deciding factor for the green and red arrow for many of us was Estepinian, with Brighton pulling one of the upsets of the season as he scored, assisted, kept a clean sheet, got booked and took all three bonus points. So well done if you had him as well. Unfortunately I didn't, but just two game weeks to go, so let's have a look at how the team set to line up for Gameweek 37. Another double game week for Brighton and two home games this time round, first against Southampton before a tougher one against league leaders Man City. Delighted for Steele to have kept his spot after doubts of him losing it. Behind the scenes, it appears Sanchez wasn't happy about sitting on the bench and he's decided not to travel the squad recently, so Steele's undoubtedly first choice now. The back three is Shaw, Trent and Trippier. A transfer made already, very rarely make early transfers but that's twice in two weeks now due to having exact money for a swap with price rises at risk. Last week it was March to McAllister and this week with exact money, Gabriel's been sold for Shaw. Not one to overthink this week, as much as I'd love a Man City triple up, there's no one worth selling in midfield and I rate short over the Man City defenders. He moved back into left back last match and his expected goal involvement picked up slightly as a consequence, 0.27 xgi which was his highest since gameweek 24. Trent and Trippier, very few single game makers in the team this week, but what an outstanding second half of the season Trent's had by the way. It's wild that he doesn't even make the England squad. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Should Southgate find a way to accommodate him, perhaps in his inverted fullback role that he's been thriving in? He's failed to pick up an attacking return in just two of his last eight matches, and he kept a clean sheet in both those games, so he hasn't blanked since the loss to Man City back in game at 29. I wonder how FP will price him next season. I wonder how Trippier will be priced as well. He's kind of had a reverse season to Trent in many ways, absolutely essential early on, and then he had that run of eight clean sheets in a row, and now the clean sheets have dried up, as have the attacking returns. Newcastle are home to Leicester though, who have looked so vulnerable recently. I'll be very sad for Leicester if this game is the nail in the coffin for them. Some legendary FPL and Premier League memories, winning the league against the odds, and obviously produced some of the best FPL assets ever. In the 15-16 season, I had 5.5 mil Mares from Game Week 1 who finished on 240 points, surely one of the biggest bargains in FPL history. The midfield is Matoma, McAllister, Salah, Fernandez, and Rashford captain. We better talk about captaincy first. Again, I've just been going for fun punts over the tail end of the season as far as captaincy. It's worked out some weeks, not in others. I hope to lead by example in the sense that this game isn't life and death if you're having a bad season. It's felt like that to me in past years. To me, it doesn't matter if I finish 200k or 400k. My first ever bad season and a humbling one, but very much enjoyed it and still putting absolutely everything I've got into the content. And I'm delighted by all the comments each week I see about how you're winning your mini leagues or you've reached your rank goals thanks to the content, so keep them coming. So Rashford captain, who has been spotted back in training, I will of course pay attention to Ten Hag's press conference in case there's any doubt, otherwise it could be Fernandez instead. I fancy Man United to have a good double game week as well, so let's hope for a repeat of double game week 22 where Rashford scored 20. Bruno's 26 chances over the last 6 games is top in the league and among mids only Salah and Madison have a high expected goal involvement. So it's the Matoma and McAllister double up for the back to back home games, Brighton still well in the race for European football, 5th and 6th place secures Europa League for them, so let's hope for a good game against a already relegated Southampton before a game against Man City to expect less from. The double game weeks can certainly play tricks on you, Mac and Matoma actually haven't done that much in recent game weeks. Similarly priced assets like Eze and Gibbs White have smashed it recently and they're actually on more points over the season. 
Salah's blank just once in his last nine starts now, which was the week I captained him against West Ham, by the way. A great fixture this week, home to Villa, and he hasn't blanked at home since game week 21, back in January. Not a captaincy candidate, unfortunately, this week, given the double for Man United and Man City with better options. So the front two is Haaland and Alvarez. Frustratingly, nothing from Alvarez since picking him up, and he has started every game since. He scored in the Champions League as well against Real Madrid. Really hard as always to predict how Pep lines up this week. He'll be keen to wrap up the league at the earliest opportunity, but again some incredible depth rested in Alvarez, Foden, and Mares, etc. So two starts will be a pleasant surprise for Alvarez, but you get what you pay for. Six mil for a forward and the best attacking team in the league. Very jealous of any Mares owners, I feel that he could be the one as far as the mids. So Haaland is of course the obvious captain this week. If you're playing defensive now, or consolidating rank, or mini league position then he's your man. If you don't have anything to play for, or if you're aggressively chasing, then I do really like Rashford and Bruno as alternates. Incredible season by Erling, already the top scoring Man City player of all time with three games to play. Only Ronaldo, Van Persie and Henri have started a season of 14 mil in FPL, could hardly be the next one. Or if anything, should he be even more? So on the bench it's Raya, Izak, Botman and Zinchenko. Certainly potential for Izak to do some damage against Leicester, but there's no way into the team for him this week. Gabriel Tashaw already done, no further transfers to be made, so that's the team for this week. I read all your comments, so leave one below, and if you enjoyed the video hit like and make sure you subscribe him. See you soon for the next one.